All right. So in this video, I wanted to ramble a little bit about adoption, uh, among other things, probably. But adoption is one of these things that many antinatalists tend to point towards for the people who claim to want kids, the people who feel as though having children is going to really do it for them. Like that will fulfill them in ways that nothing else could ever even come close. You know, having their own in particular, their own biological child, and then assisting in this gradual molding, this, this developmental process of this little person that they've created into a big person and attempting to instill in them values and attempting to, to, to cultivate and to nurture them into, you know, happy, <laughs> confident, competent individuals, grown-ups that'll go on and, and be good people. And that's, that's something that appeals that whole pro the action of create and then the process of molding their create that appeals to a lot of people, a lot of people. And I get it. I'm, I'm able to wrap my head around it as to why, of course. Um, but I don't think I'm ever going to do it. I'm not going to ever do it because it's a big fucking deal. And there's a lot of, a lot can go wrong. And a big reason you said, you know, set aside a lot, of, a lot of the selfish reasons. Of course, there are many of those that I have as to why I'd never want to have a child. And the, so the reasons that are more concerned with all the things that can go wrong, even if you set those aside, it's still just, I don't think that I will ever be capable of being a great father. I don't, I don't think that I'll, I'm certainly not at this point in my life. And I highly doubt that I will ever be at a point where I'll feel incredibly confident that I will be capable of being the sort of father that I would have to be in order for me to justify that action. And having a child, I don't think I'll ever be capable of that. That is quite something. It takes, if we are being honest, it takes a, a certain sort of person to be a genuinely good father, to be a genuinely good mother, a good parent. And that is something that most people do, do not seem to be capable of. Uh, and it isn't, again, it isn't a coincidence that you know, people who accidentally, unintentionally create people and they tend to not do a very good job. They tend to do like the worst job of it. Um, point is, adoption. What sort of, because to have a biological child, to, to, to raise your own flesh and blood and do a fucking great job of that, it does. It requires a certain... A certain temperament, a certain, a certain capacities like that. That is a hell of a thing to do. Let alone adopt. Let alone that level of sacrifice, that level of commitment for a child that isn't your own. What sort of person does it take to do that? And I've been thinking about this a lot more lately. Like what sort? Like how? What compels a person? And in, in most cases, to do that, and it's again, well, human nature really, really comes into play here. It, it is not a coincidence that most people who adopt, you know, the, a large portion of people who do end up adopting children, they have oftentimes exhausted all the other avenues, all the other ways in which to have a biological child. That's just not in the cards for them, and they've tried, they've tried just relentlessly they've gone through just insanely elaborate lengths jump through insanely elaborate hoops to have their own biological child and it's just not working and then from that point for most people then they might consider adoption adopting a human being um, and that is quite something that's a lot of it a lot of it is just yet yeah, the option isn't there for for many many people to have a biological child so they're just like, oh, well, shit, I can't have this biological extension. That is out of my hands. That's not a possibility for me. Then they start looking at adoption. And you'll have this very commonly with people who have sort of just... Because again, hey, you know, if you're a responsible adult and you're thinking about having a child, eventually you want to really make sure that you are as prepared for the task as you possibly can be, right? So you're going to want to really do all you can to, to pre prepare for this action. And that takes time, oftentimes. 
So people typically don't start trying for a child. When, you know, the people who want to do it deliberately, intentionally have a child, they, they oftentimes don't start trying for a child, in many cases, until they start getting into you know, like the late 20s, early 30s, maybe even later than that. And of course, you're going to have increases in fertility issues the older you get. Um, and I also, I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to share a story with you because this is another, and a lot of this, of course, I mean, I'm not speaking from experience. You know, a lot of it is just me talking out of my ass. I wanted to just share a few thoughts on this, but I've noticed there is a common correlation here as well with, with certain religious belief. And I met a family, I was playing some pickup basketball. I met a family, a nice, sweet family, seemed well put together and all that. And um, soon after that, I, I found out that they had just gotten out, the family had just gotten out of a relationship, a pretty nasty relationship with a church that they were members of. And they were telling me about this and I found it very, very interesting. And they believed in some pretty fucking wacky, they believed that, uh, so I'm gonna wrap this video up because my phone's on 10% and I still use my phone to, to record videos and I didn't charge it because I'm stupid. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it quick. But they believed that the rapture was coming within like the next decade, maybe uh, two decades. And they believed this very strongly. And they, you know, Jesus was coming back and all the good people are going to go up into heaven and all the bad people are going to have to stay on earth or burn in hell. The vast majority of them are going to be left you know, on earth and then the vast majority of those are going to burn in hell. And they believed this um, and they stopped believing it. They left the church and they still identified as Christians. They still believed in the whole Jesus story and the powers and stuff and the afterlife. But I, it got me thinking. They did come across as genuinely sweet, uh, kind people. And they had a child that they had adopted. Uh, he was about maybe like 10 years old. And it seemed like, it seemed like a cool kid. You know, he was a little spazzy. Uh, we were playing pickup basketball and he, he kept fouling me. But, you know, overall, it seemed like a nice enough young man. And um, they adopted him. And I, my 20 year old brain started thinking soon after, like, well, I wonder how, how common that is. Like, people are oftentimes, I'm sure, compelled to, you know, that level of sacrifice, again, that level of commitment, oftentimes it is owed to certain forms of religious belief. In many cases, they feel as though they're going to be rewarded just in a substantial way in the afterlife for taking on this level of commitment and sacrifice for a child that isn't theirs. And that's not a coincidence, the fact that that, that is a common, there's a correlation there that exists, that level of so you have it in many, many cases with people who adopt. It's either they don't have any other option. Uh, they, well, they've exhausted the biological options and they want to really, really want to raise a child and that appeals to them. So then they go with adoption. Or they feel as though they're going to just be rewarded immensely by God. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of it too. Like that's, that's a hell of a lot of it. And uh, yeah, a lot of it does come down to human nature. Now, what sort of people, again, just doing a great job of being a parent to the, towards their own biological children. That is, great parents are hard to come by in, in this area, right? Let alone being able to be a great parent towards a child who isn't your own. And like it or not, we human beings are very selfish, we're very egotistical, and many people do view their own children as, as extensions of themselves, as these biological extensions. They feel very tied, they feel very invested in that area. And you, many people don't have that as much when it comes to stepchildren, for example, that's commonly found there as well. Um, and that's it, I guess. I just I wanted to ramble. I wanted to give a few thoughts on this, but um, yeah, it's that is not a coincidence. It does take a very, very, to do that, also to be an atheist and to genuinely be motivated by altruistic desire to help raise another person's child and, and, and change the trajectory of their lives without feeling any sort of metaphysical rewards awaiting you, hello, in the hereafter. Uh, that's, that takes a very, very particular sort of person to do that. And... Yeah. So 
the idea that, oh yeah, just adopt, adopt, don't shop. I adopted, there's my dogs right here, I adopted him, uh, and he's a dog, and that is, <laughs> like, I understand why many people go the other route of, get, you know, puppy mill, uh, and I didn't do it, because, oh, I'm such a good person, but uh, he's a great fucking dog, but he's also very aggressive, he, he doesn't do well with other dogs, um, and it did take a certain level of sacrifice to pick him over Puppy Mill, it, but not anywhere near the level of sacrifice it would take if I was to adopt a human being person. That is a way more substantial form of sacrifice. And many people, when it comes to having children, deeply regret having had children. Uh, in general, that is a very common sort of thing. So for people to adopt a child, I, I, just, I wonder how common of a regret that tends to be. Maybe not at all. I, I need to do more research in this area. And I don't want to, I don't think I'm capable of persuading someone away from adoption. If anyone's going to deeply consider the possibility of adoption, they're going to be someone that is given it lots and lots of thought and introspection, hopefully. So whatever I say here isn't going to have any sort of effect. Uh, and if it does, then good, because you probably wouldn't have done a good job anyways if you were to adopt a child. That's, that's a, a hell of a fucking thing to do. Uh, and people commonly talk about it so loosely, especially in particular with antinatalists, and a lot of it is signaling, like, oh, I might adopt one day. And I myself am guilty of this. Uh, but there's no fucking way. I, if I'm being honest, there's just no way that I would ever be capable of being a great father towards someone else's child. Again, it takes a very particular sort of person, and I'm not that. That would be a very, very difficult thing to take on. Very difficult task. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad that people like that exist. But, yeah, I, I wouldn't... I, I, I'm not that. I wouldn't be able to do that. And vast majority of people would not. And again, commonly, you see it with step-parents. Most step-parents fucking suck. They really do. Most step-parents don't give a single shit about their stepchildren, many of them, at least. And this is quite clear, quite blatant. And uh, it is, you know, there's a lot of competition that exists, and part of me can't really blame them too much, because it is just, a lot of it is human nature. And I'm rambling a lot because my phone's going to die any minute now. So I'm going to end it here. But let me know what your thoughts are on adoption. Uh, I guess the summary is adoption, adopting a human being person, that's a hell of a thing to do. And the vast majority of people are not capable of doing a good job at raising a biological child, let alone an adopted one. So those are my thoughts. Uh, yeah, let me know what your thoughts are.